Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and today I have my 2021 yearly favorites for base products. I wanted to split them up because honestly this video is going to be way too long if I don't split it up and we're just going to jump straight into it because I've got a lot of products to share with you guys. So starting off with primer, the first one that I want to mention is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. This stuff I absolutely love. It is gorgeous. It's great as like a moisturizer or if you want it as an actual primer, it is great for that. I don't, it doesn't look like I've used much, but honestly, this stuff is absolutely awesome. So it is like a cream and oh my goodness, it is so nice on the skin and it's just such a delight to have as kind of like a base underneath your makeup. It gives hydration and it really does give your skin like a beautiful glow and it just makes anything that you put on top look great. So I absolutely love that. So the next one that I have is the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas Primer. This stuff is absolutely gorgeous. I really, really like it and it does come with a pump as well. So you can dispense it evenly on the face. I like this because it really does soften like your imperfections on your face, whether you have pores or maybe you've got some lines that you want to cover. It really does help to diffuse those problem areas. And then lucky last for primer is the Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow Primer. This stuff is beautiful. It gives the skin a beautiful luminous finish. And when I do apply it to my face, I also bring it down my neck and decolletage as well. And it honestly just gives the most beautiful sheen to the skin. It's a very different glow to the Bobbi Brown. The Bobbi Brown actually does, I guess, kind of hydrate the skin. While this one actually has like, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got like shimmer... It's got like shimmer particles to it. You can kind of see it like here. Like you can see the different shimmers in it. So you can see that it is like a cream. And then if you rub it in, it gives an, a beautiful luminosity to the skin. And honestly, between those three, I've been reaching for them so often. I would say that the Wonder Glow is the one that I've been using the most just because it's really, really quick and easy. But really i've been loving all three of them and now moving on to actual base products so the first one i recently mentioned this in one of my videos but this is the misha perfect cover bb cream this has spf 42 which i absolutely love and i have mine in the shade 27 honey beige i really like it it has a pump so it's really really convenient to use on the skin it's one of those where you just do a few pumps rub between your fingers apply it, and you're good to go i love this for everyday wear it gives you your spf like as an extra layer and honestly i just love using this stuff it's great it's very affordable i buy mine from iherb and yeah overall i think it's a really really good product with a lot of coverage Next is my NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. This stuff is absolutely beautiful as well. It does have a pump. I really, really love foundations that have a pump because then I can disperse things easily and it doesn't make a massive mess. But I love this because, again, it's got beautiful coverage and I love the effect that it has on the skin. It's just, honestly, one of my favorites and I like all these foundations that I'm mentioning today, either on their own or mixed in with each other. But yeah, this one is an absolutely beautiful one. I have mine in the shade Stromboli and I love this. It works so nicely with my fake tan and yeah, just overall really, really love it. Next is my Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. Now I have mine in the shade 2W0. And I just love this. It isn't as much coverage as like the rest of the foundations that I'm mentioning, but it is very, very nice and thin. And I do like it, at least thin for me. I love a lot of coverage. But if I do want to wear a foundation, like say I've got an event or I just want to look like I've got foundation on, but I don't want it to be too thick or too, not thick because like the NARS isn't thick at all, but if I want it to just be a little bit more sheared out and a little bit less coverage, because I've kind of been opting for that, or at least a little bit less for me personally, um, I have been using the Skin Glow or using this and mixing it in with the others. And then Lucky Last, this is definitely my favorite foundation of the year. Like honestly, this is 
the bee's knees. I absolutely love this foundation so, so much. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I, I have this in multiple shades, but the best color for me and the one that I always reach for is 7.5 Neutral. It is amazing. I do have the Dior Skin Foundation and this mixed in together, and it's on my face today, and I love how it looks. I've been wearing these two together. I pretty much was wearing these two together for the whole duration of my honeymoon. I'm absolutely obsessed with them, and I just do a pump of each, but there is definitely a lot more that comes out of a pump in the Charlotte Tilbury um, compared to the Dior, but I love that combo. One pump of this, one pump of this, but quantity-wise, you would definitely get more of the Charlotte Tilbury in a pump. Also, just one last thing about the Dior that I absolutely really appreciate is that it does have SPF 35, so it is actually quite comparable to the Misha BB cream in that aspect. But I would say that the coverage of this is not as high um, compared to the Misha. But I love all of these, and I pretty much only use these in rotation. But yeah, honestly, between these four base products, I honestly do not remember the last time that I used anything other than these four um maybe like on camera for like a quick video or something like that or playing around with like different products and stuff like that but in terms of like everyday life going to events all that type of stuff it's really only been those four those have been my absolute ride or die love them so my first concealer favorite would have to be the charlotte tilbury i don't even know what this is called but it's basically their corrector i have a look on the back but i don't think that I can make out any but my first favorite is a corrector now I do have two shades I did buy light first and then I was like you know what I really need to get a darker shade so I did get medium these I use as correctors underneath my eyes honestly either of these work I do think that medium does work a little bit better for me just because it is a bit darker so it does have a bit more like color to correct while light is a little bit lighter but both of them still do an amazing job i loved light so much that i had to buy medium as well and yeah absolutely love both of these they are so so good for underneath the eyes and they don't feel too heavy either which i just appreciate i just love that so next is my mac pro conceal and correct palette in the shade medium so you can see that this is very, very well loved by me, specifically these two bottom shades and then this shade up the top here as well. Oh my goodness. I love the versatility of this palette. Like you can mix and match to what you need. You do have some like cream contour shades if you want to use them or if I'm a little bit more tanned, I kind of like dabble in and kind of like make my own color kind of thing. But yeah, absolutely love this. I use these for under eye concealing or also concealing blemishes on my face. And oh my goodness, I absolutely love it. It is a little bit more emollient compared to the Charlotte Tilbury, but I love both of them like regardless. When I am traveling, I do bring this one along just purely because it is so slim and compact and you do get six different shades. So you can kind of like mix and match to what you need though. But both of them I absolutely love and I wouldn't say that one is better than the other it's just that this one does have more options available with what you can do with the colors and then for like actual concealers like skin toned concealers honestly I feel like these two have been my favorite for years so Tarte Shape Tape oh my goodness I absolutely love this stuff I have so many different shades I feel like my most common ones are like light sand light neutral like that type of realm I think I've got light neutral underneath my eyes today to be honest I probably didn't do the best job at correcting today it was just a mess but anyway um but yeah Tarte Shape Tape absolutely love it Great coverage, doesn't make my under eyes look crusty or funky or anything like that. And I move my hands so much, I can't believe it. I need to stop. But yeah, absolutely love Tarte Shape Tape. It is just the bee's knees. I absolutely love it. And then also the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. The main shades that I use are vanilla and custard. So vanilla is this shade here, and they're they're literally just true to the tube color. And then this one here is the shade Custard. I have been leaning towards Custard a little bit more just because I've been liking that not so bright under eye look, but I still have a place in my heart for both shades, especially when I'm like varying in tan color and stuff like that. 
but yeah i love these as well i feel like i have been leaning more towards the nars recently um just because i feel like it's less like it's a thicker consistency so it doesn't go as far so it's more concentrated underneath the eyes but both of them honestly have been my go-to like i haven't been disappointed with either of these and i absolutely love the outcome of both so moving on to powder now, I feel like this year I was really trying to find like the powder, like the chef kiss powder, but I don't know, like I'm looking at my favorites and honestly it is stuff that I have loved for a really, really long time. Um, since I've been back from my honeymoon, I haven't been able to find my normal color of this, so I don't know where it's gone. It feels like this powder always runs away from me and then eventually comes back. But I do have a different tone to show you guys for today, just so you can kind of get like the aesthetic of the packaging and stuff. But my first favorite is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. This one is in the shade Translucent Honey, so it does have a slightly like yellow tone to it, but not much. It looks like that. To be honest, on camera, that's how like the normal translucent looks as well. But the one that I reach for the most is just the standard translucent, and I just use it to set my whole face. I don't know why, I just find it so quick, easy and efficient just to use a translucent powder under the eyes, on the eyelids and all over the face and then you're good to go. You're not messing around with like a lighter powder, a skin tone one, like you're not messing around with all that type of stuff. It's just so easy, so quick and it's just great. And I feel like with translucent powders, honestly, one lasts you so, so, so long. Next is one that was in my collection and then I reintroduced it. This is the Beauty Bakery Flower setting powder now i have mine in the shade translucent and it's called oat um here i'll show you the back this is what the back looks like so you can see here it does say translucent oat so i don't know if that helps anybody but that's what i use i really do like this um this one i would say packaging wise is just superior to the laura mercier just simply because and not that i actually used it but it actually has like a little thing where you can close off the sieve when you remember to close off the sieve it is very convenient um i forgot this time but it really did help me so much when i was traveling when i went on my honeymoon this was the only like loose powder that i brought with me and it was so good because i used to be able to lock it up and i wouldn't be left with like a powdery mess at the end it was so good and then for pressed powder honestly it is not going to be a surprise to anybody but it is the mac studio fix pressed powder i do have quite a few shades of this but honestly just any shade of this powder is just my favorite it's been my favorite for years and i will keep coming back to it moving on to bronzer i'm going to start off with cream bronzer and i do have two favorites my first one is the huda beauty tantua now i have mine in the shade tantua light if that is like if that means anything to anybody this is what it looks like in the pan and I really love this shade in particular. I did see quite a few different shades in the store, but honestly, the light color is my favorite tone. I think that is the most complimentary for my skin. Um, I will say that I don't use cream bronzer much, but when I do, I seem to always either reach for this one or the next one that I'm gonna to mention to you guys. But yeah, this one is so easy to blend out. It is so nice, so quick, so simple. It is just great and an amazing tone as well. I feel like that's so hard to find with cream bronzers. But yeah, love this one. And then the next one is the Nude Stick Nudies Bondi Bay. Oopsie, I always do that. I always open it up at the wrong end. And it's like, how hard is it to open it up on the end that actually has the color? Anyway. So it's basically just a stick bronzer and you just swipe it on your skin. That's the color of it there. Really, I should have swiped the Huda Beauty one. I'll do that. But yeah, it really just depends on what I feel that day. I do personally feel like this one, like the Bondi Bay one, is a little bit more warm toned and a little bit more light. While the Huda Beauty is a little bit more like, I don't know, cool toned, I guess cool tone and a little bit more bronzy like contoury but I do really like both of these for powder bronzer though oh my goodness this one I found this year and it has been amazing this is the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer 
in the shade medium and I absolutely love it so, so much. I don't actually have any on my skin now, so I'm just going to pop a little bit on. But yeah, it honestly just provides the most beautiful warmth to the skin. I don't know if you'll be able to tell because I'm sure my um, studio lights will wash some of it out. But yeah, like honestly, I love how this looks on the skin. It's great as like an everyday natural bronzer or it's great if you want to build it up as well. I absolutely love it. It's so soft and seamless. It's even beautiful as an eyeshadow as well. And then this has been a favorite for absolute years, but this is my Milk Chocolate Soleil bronzer. This is the bronzer that I had on like originally, and then I put on the Charlotte Tilbury on top. Love this as well. Even though I do fake tan and it does look like relatively similar to my skin tone, I do personally prefer Milk Chocolate Soleil over like the standard Chocolate Soleil. I think it's just a complete tone thing for me. Like for me, I feel like certain bronzers pull very, very red. And even though they look stunning on other people, like stunning, it does not look like that on me. Like Give Me Sun looks so gorgeous on literally everybody that I've seen it on. Absolutely gorgeous. Me, it does not look good at all. Not even as a blush. So I'm really, really particular when it comes to my bronzers and having like a tone be very, very good for me. And this, oh my God, this has been my ride or die for literally eight years. It has been my ride or die. Absolutely love it. Literally, if they ever stop making this, I do not know what I will do with myself. Mine's still in the old packaging because honestly, it takes me forever to use them up as well. Like, I'm not even joking you. Like, they literally will last like two years. I know you're probably supposed to throw it away after 12 months, it says on the back. But yeah, honestly... And also because I haven't been going out as much because of lockdown. But yeah, there is a nicer packaging now, but this is mine. And oh my God, I absolutely love it. So normally I never buy like duos or anything like that. Like I just don't find them to be my thing. And yeah, they're just not my thing. But I had to buy this. This has been my collection for quite a while. And honestly, the more and more I use it, the more in love with it I get. Like just literally. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. So obviously this is the bronzer side, this is the highlighter side, and I love both. Like honestly, I absolutely love both so, so much. Can't really see the bronzer, but it does apply to the skin absolutely stunningly. And then how beautiful is that highlight? Personally, I do think that the Film Star Bronze and Glow is a lot of money, but bearing in mind, you do get two very decently sized products. So it is 16 grams, eight gram a pan, I think is probably what it is. It doesn't actually state that, but I'd assume that that's what would happen. They'll do half, half. And it just looks amazing. The highlighter is so beautiful and so natural. And the bronzer, is just a beautiful sculpting shade. I do have a little bit of it here. I don't know why, but sometimes this cheek, there's like a patch where it looks like I've got nothing. So just excuse that, but you can see it on this side. It honestly gives like the most beautiful sculpt to the skin. Absolutely love it. It is great. The highlighter is awesome. It is just a great multi-purpose product and it's definitely worth the hefty, hefty price tag. Continuing on with highlighters, I could not not include this product. I feel like as I've gotten older or as trends have been changing, I've been like liking that beaming highlight less and less, but I still love like a really, really, what was that? I'm just grabbing my face. I still love like a really, really luminous look. So I've been reaching so much for the Illamasqua OMG highlighter. This is absolutely stunning. It is a little bit pink toned, but still like champagne toned. I do have it on my cheeks today and I absolutely love it. When I don't have like intense lights on my face, it doesn't look as intense as this, but honestly, it's just so, so, so beautiful. Like this is what it looks like up close. And you can see that it's just like the most beautiful, like pearl. It's just absolutely stunning. And then last, we have blush. 
Now, I feel like my blush taste has definitely changed with the years. I used to love a matte blush and now it feels like I just could not run away fast enough from a matte blush, if you know what I mean. Or at least without having it as, with like a topper or something like that. But definitely, I have three favorite blushes. None of these are matte. I would say the most matte one that there is is probably this one here. So this is NARS Deep Throat. I absolutely love it. You can see the sparkles in it. The spark, like the giant chunks on, what was this? Like just shaking it. Um, the giant chunks in this here don't transmit to the face, like translate to the face, but the beautiful sheen does. And I am obsessed. You will see a very, very common trend with these blushes. I feel like they do look quite similar on the cheeks, but all of them I absolutely love. So yeah, NARS Deep Throat it definitely has been a go-to this year. Absolutely stunning. Love it. The next favorite is the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic Love Glow, like Swirl Pop. What's it called? Swish and Pop blusher so the concept of this is that you can kind of use either both i know it's hard to see this is probably like the least like obvious shade out of the collection but you can kind of see when i tilt it that there is a color on the outside and then a color on the inside and yeah i absolutely love this i just literally just kind of like swoosh my brush into it and then apply it to my cheeks gives the most beautiful glow this is a little bit lighter than nars deep throat but I absolutely love it. It's good when you're wanting to do like a nice, fresh look. I always reach for this one. It's just so, so, so beautiful. And I know it looks like I've hardly used any, but honestly, it does not take much to look just absolutely stunning on the face. I promise. And then lucky last, I have MAC Warm Soul. Now I've just applied a little bit more to my cheeks. Don't mind this strip that literally looks like there's nothing. In real life, it's there, but I think my cheeks are just a little bit large and it just picks up weird on camera. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh God. MAC Warm Soul. This is just a beautiful, like nudie blush color. Honestly, it's great. It's got a beautiful luminosity to it and it just looks good when you just want to look put together, have some blush on your face, but it doesn't look like, wow, you have blush on. Some days I do, and I will pack on a blush that's just like bright pink or peach. But most of the time, I just want something that's either just a nice pink, a nude, or just like a beautiful glowy color. So yeah, between those three, I get my perfect like spectrum of everything, and I am so, so, so happy with it. And for setting spray, it is always, always, always the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. I've lost the big lid, but I've still got the small one. So it is what it is. But yeah, honestly, the bee's knees. It is just my absolute favorite. Ride or die, always use it, can't live without it. But yeah, overall, that is all my base favorite products from 2021. I can't believe that the year has come and gone. It has been an absolute mess, but it's also been probably one of the most enjoyable years of my life. So yeah, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.